modernization, how it affects I prepared this topic thinking it is a small topic and will not take much time from me. And then I started to work on it and I found it is increasing and increasing. So I'm going to give you less than half of it today, hoping that I get another chance to complete it. The place that invited me to speak on this generously gave me an hour and a half. So I told them, divide it, please, so that another speaker would be in between, that people don't be bored by hour and a half, one speaker. I think you can answer this question without any data by realizing that, yes, allergy is increasing. But we need evidence always. So let's speak on three parts. What's the prevalence trend over the past two to three decades? And what are the causes of these trends? How you explain them? The magazines and newspapers write a lot about them. It is a very popular topic. Fortunately for us, the public claim our diseases even without having them. They're not ashamed to say I have allergies, and they brag about it. Nobody say, don't disgust us with it, unless the person say have colitis, pancreatitis, hepatitis, and all these funny things. But allergy is a, a good stuff. We love it. The trends, I'm going to show you from several places, and globally as well, in recent decades, we found infectious diseases are going down, but autoimmune diseases, MS, inflammatory bowel disease, diabetes mellitus are going up, together with asthma and food allergies. We find in the United Kingdom, over the years, the prevalence of the atopic dermatitis continuously increasing, reaching up to 20%, that's a very high percentage, and still increasing. Also in the United Kingdom, eczema and alleged hanites and asthma, comparing two intervals to 25 years in between, every allergic disease is increasing. In the one decade in the United Kingdom about various allergies, urticaria, anaphylaxis, came to the hospitals, meaning they are well documented. Food allergies, angioedema, all of them are going up. And the prevalence of allergy and the asthma in the United States, asthma and the eczema are going up. Hay fever to somewhat lesser extent, but patients who have hay fever, which I hate the term, but the, because there is no hay or fever in hay fever. It's allergic rhinitis. Most patients with allergic rhinitis don't recognize it. They think that's the usual. And they live with it. So what? So that's why I found that it is it, allergic rhinitis is the highest of all in prevalence. But we are looking now for trends anyway. At the global level, comparing a large number of countries, find that the rise is remarkable in certain countries, Australia, New Zealand, United Kingdom, New York City, and in the other countries, there is increase still, but not as dramatic as this. If we have the same methodology in the same country, comparing at various intervals, the intervals may be varying, but if we look at each country, the earlier compared to the later, always the later surveys showed much higher. So with every method of assessing the trend, it is going up everywhere and going remarkably. And it is not because a better diagnosis. Of course, with education, there is better discovery. 
but there is real increase in disease. Comparing eczema in two age groups in the United Kingdom, an age group of six to seven, another age group 13 to 14, and they did a survey and six years later repeated it on the same group, the same methods, and you find that both in the boys and in the girls, there is increase in both groups. The odds ratio is almost doubled, or at least one and a half times. One of the causes is food allergies increased consumption. People don't get allergy of something unless they take it. And the more they take of it, the more likely they will get it. And poor countries cannot afford that. But we are rich. And we find foods of any kind at any time of the year. And we like to have a lot of foods, particularly the percentage of eating out is more and the enticing all what you can eat for nine ninety five. Wow, that's a good deal. Person enters overweight, within one hour comes out obese. So in food allergy, find there is an increase in eighteen percent in one decade. Hospitalized for food allergies increased three and a half times as many between 98 and 2000. The newspapers love the topic, fortunately, and they spread it all over that food allergies are increasing in every newspaper in the country. And this is the trend in food allergy. It is very steep between 98 of 2000 and 2004 to 6 increased by almost 400 percent. And these are documented cases because coming from the hospital with diagnosis related to food allergy. And go to another country, the Chinese, are always known to be thin and just eat vegetables and uh, healthy food. Two cross-sectional studies were performed 10 years apart using the same methods in the same age group, young children, at the same clinic, everything controlled. About 400 infants were randomly selected. Skin prick test between these two intervals increased from 10% to 18%. Egg and cow's milk were the most common, causing the skin and the GI symptoms. Challenge to confirm the diagnosis showed the well-confirmed cases jumped from 3.5%, 7.5, more than double. Anaphylaxis, this shows by age, age groups, stands out the young infants, zero to four. And aphylaxis in general is less in children and milder in children than adults. But in the age zero to four was much remarkable. Possibly because we love younger children more possibly and we like to admit them in the hospital right away in that bus place of that. But fortunately, the mortality in them is much less than in older patients. Why are they increasing? I think we have enough evidence that it is increasing everywhere. And I will show you more. Why? Either it's a direct effect more exposure to the allergens, or indirect, there are increasing contributory factors that they are not allergenic, 
by themselves, but facilitate for the allergy to occur. The increasing allergen exposure, we start with the diet. We are born right away, and the first thing we do is eating. So either you give me the natural food that God created for me, or you steal from an animal which I don't like, but I have no choice. So baby formula caused more than breastfeeding. There is no debate about that. Later, the quantity and the variety of foods. Mothers like to introduce a lot of foods, and they like every time they weigh the baby to see the baby is gaining weight. And unfortunately, they brag about it. Say, my baby is the 99 percentile in weight. This is not a grade in the school, ma'am. The best grade here in our school is 50. So keep it around 50, don't brag about the 99 percentile in weight. Indoor allergens, outdoor allergens, and we are providing some allergens, the medications. We'll go in some details of each. There are a lot of data about breastfeeding. I'll choose just a few. It's an Australian birth cohort. Exclusive breastfeeding for at least four months was associated with reduced risk of asthma and atopy, documented up to the age of six years. There's another famous cohort in Germany, extending beyond 10 years of age, and seeing the effect is maintained. If you look at the odds ratio by individual manifestation, whether wheezing, asthma, atopic dermatitis, or three allergic diseases in the same individual or more, shows that breastfeeding for at least four months favors the reduction of these diseases. And this is part of the German study. The risk of having allergy is much less if it is human milk rather than cow's milk formula. In a Swedish birth cohort, infant exclusively breastfed for at least four months. I hope you notice that the figure the word four months. These four months showed reduction by about one third in the wheezing and asthma, topic dermatitis, and multiple allergies. High reductions were observed in high risk infants breastfed for six months, meaning breastfeeding is especially important in prevention of allergy when one or both parents or a sibling has allergy. It will make a difference more than a family which does not have allergy in the parents. Well, this is a meta-analysis about atopic dermatitis, again about breastfeedings, from a large number of studies. The first group with a positive family history, and the, so that in most studies is to the left, some of them crossed, the confidence interval crossed, which make it not significant. But even if it crossed, there is definite trend. Allergies are multifactorial diseases. When we study one factor only, we are not going to get the whole effect. So we'll not be disappointed if we could not do a cake or sugar alone or with flour alone. We have to put all the ingredients. So in addition to breastfeeding force, we need other things. But these studies focus on one variable. And then the group where there are no family history of, of allergy, the same thing. The trend is to the left. 
And the averages are always to the left of the line. This star. That's for atopic dermatitis. And for, oh, thank you. You did that? But thank you anyway. Take it. Isn't it? You get a compliment, grab it. Nowadays. And this is about asthma and the wheezing. Again, the group with the family history. Most of the studies are coming to the left, a few crossed, and the average is to the left, and the negative family history is also there. So there is a good evidence that breastfeeding for at least four months will help. If we look at the food allergy in particular, why it's increasing, the food consumption, of course, The, everybody talks about the obesity pandemic. You know, they will, they will sleep, Dr. Bukini. No, no please. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yes, good. No. That can help. Uh, they, they will walk without seeing them. But I told somebody to come to lock the doors. He didn't. Can you please lock the doors? Don't let any. Oh, no, he's, he's, he's believing me. <laughs> Don't let anybody leave. <laughs> Just at least take a picture of the people. Probably. Okay, thanks, that's good. And I'm going to disturb them. By the way, I don't have an accent. I make it up so that I disturb you to sleep. <laughs> so the evidence that a lot of food is being eaten, the obesity, including the highly allergenic food. Fish is a very popular, nutritious food. Peanuts everywhere, in various forms, and tree nuts. And of course, milk and egg in everywhere. The buffet restaurants, food varieties and food cross reactivities. Meaning if I am sensitized to one food, I may react to multiple foods that are cross reacting with them. Cross reactivities with non ingestants also, like certain foods cross react with rubber latex, which is being reduced markedly in most places. Cockroach and mite cross react with shellfish, crustacea, and pollens also cross react with certain food. Like weed, a person allergic to weed, and he'll have burning sensation in the mouth from melon. Commercial foods incorporate multiple nutrients. They're adding things and adding additives and various coloring, and they just compete with the other manufacturers. Incorporation of food protein in diagnostic and therapeutic agents. So the person is taking a pill, and we sort out the reaction was not due to the active medication, but due to a, a few food protein in the pill or in the syrup, or in the injectables. They are one systemic corticosteroid preparation that has milk protein in it, and the other preparations don't have it. So we discovered this. So the, in the indoor allergens, food, of course, every house has that, in variety and quantity, mostly commercial, we don't cook much at home, and buy from restaurant and bring it home. Every house, particularly rich houses that have nice upholstered furniture, the mites are there. Mites are snobby creatures. Don't like poor life. They wanted to live one thing. Mold with the humidity, of course, in and out, particularly in our Louisiana, and pets. I'm not going to ask you, believe me, I will not, who has pets, but God knows. I, I don't want to know. Cosmetics are increasing with modernization, and jewelry, since we are rich, because in poor countries, they will just make the jewelry of a piece of plant or a piece of glass. But we are rich. We get 
expensive jewelry and a lot. And that cause allergy. In the outdoors, yes, the pollens and mold, particularly our rich Louisiana. There is no dead season in the south. And with modernization, there are a lot of factories and the industries and there will be occupational allergies. In the United States, regarding pets, dogs and or cats on about half. A later survey showed 63% of houses have pets. 10% both, 21% was dog only, and cats is less only. Cat and dog allergen is more than 90% of all U.S. homes. How come if we said that only 45 have them? How come that double the percentage have? Because the hair comes on our clothes and chews from other places. So if we take the dust in this room, there will be cat and dog allergens in it. Go in the ward in the hospital, yes, there. And sometimes I just itch when I go in the ward and I see they are entertaining our young children with the presence of a dog. I say I hope there is no asthmatic present now. Uh, three weeks ago, a lady entered our clinic and I think it was there a dog or a perfume next to her, a dog in the waiting room. And she immediately got a severe attack of asthma that we could, we could not abort it in the clinic. And we sent her into the hospital because of that exposure. I'm not saying I'm against dogs. Look, they're cute. Look at this. Nice. And they are modern. They look, they, they look. They are detected in schools, and there are good studies were done in Sweden. They gave the children brand new T-shirts when they entered the school, and at the end of the day, they just vacuumed from their surface and saw that animal hair came on these brand new shirts. Look at the social life of dogs in the, and cats in our United States. The percentage of houses that have a pet, ranging from 22% in Washington, D.C. I think they're afraid of politicians there. 71% in Vermont. And except in the D.C. area, all other states have more than 50% of the household with pets. And you know that the percentage of this increase. In Louisiana, more than half of the house. Probably they have cows and horses and pigs. And you see, this is real pictures. Here the child is cuddling nicely and happily with the dog and it just start breathing into each other and the child just get hair. And I love this picture or I hate it, our mixed feelings. <laughs> this is a baby newborn and the mother gave it to the father because she missed the cat right away. She missed the cat for a few hours during the labor. So go, go take that one. And that baby will come back here after the cat, or uh, hopefully after the cat will be let free. And the baby said, thank you, mom. Oh, it smells good, that hair. Yeah. Pets allergens, not always in the hair. 
The hair dander is in the cat and the dog and the horse and the other big animals. It is in the feather of the birds. That's why if the pillow stuffed with feather, that's a good allergy. Saliva from the cat. Cats like to lick themselves, and the protein from the saliva is stuck to the hair. And the mice, those who work in the laboratories with mice and the animal facility, that's the protein in the urine of the rat, so it's mice. And in the birds, that's the fecal protein. It can cause severe hypersensitivity pneumonitis. I knew an adult who was admitted numerous times to the intensive care unit with hypersensitivity pneumonitis that looks very bad, looked like a severe acute pneumonia. And he has, uh, I think, more than 80 free birds in the house. So I told him, man, I'm worried about you. One of those times you'll not go home on your feet. And he, he said, tell her, his wife was standing. I told her, look, he's highly sensitive to the protein of the bird. He came in the clinic, said she reduced them to 40. He still is not going to do the job from 80 to 40. But that's life. Uh, pets in the uh, United States are well-respected creatures. So they sleep in your bed in more than half of the owners. Cats are more. They are giving holiday gifts. Human beings are not. And they are taken on vacation. And you find some people in the plains, they complain, I am sneezing at because of that cat or the dog in the cage next to me. And the flight attendants don't know what to do. Because if they are going to please one over the other, the airline will be in the news in a negative way. Look at the, in the commercial flights. 100% of domestic aircraft seat samples have filled the one which is the main allergen in the cat. And this quantity can provoke asthma. All seeds. Another company, which is for airlines health issues, received 22 reports in one year related to allergy to cats and dogs. And these reports or complaints from passengers or the crew members. And in the paper in Europe, survey of the regulations of the top 10 airlines only two ban in cabin cat transport, China and Ryanair. The major airlines could not dare to ban it. They will be hurt. If you don't take my dog or my cat, I'm not coming. Transportation of cats in cargo compartments may still impose risk if air recirculated into the cabin. So it is a problem there how you solve it medically and socially. I love this. Well, I was looking for a picture of cat and I find that's true. They are making weddings for them. It's true. And uh, these are happy. Look, he is happier than her. But this is the wedding is so-so. OK, neutral. And this is teenagers. Don't care. Let us go. They went to Las Vegas and wait there. And this is over the hill wedding. <laughs> and people who live with the, their animals, they shaped like other animals. They just acquire the, the features. Look at this. Love. Rich people buy cosmetics a lot and jewelry. So make up perfumes, nail polish, hair sprays. Many other things, acrylic nails, hair dyes, tattoos, dyes, and body piercing and nickel. All these things are new uh, 
new era thing with the young people who are ruling the world now. You cannot tell an employee, you know, I'm not going to employ you because you have tattoos and you have things. You cannot do that. Even sometimes you cannot do for our children. Except that I say, you are free to take a tattoo, but get out of this house. So they knew it. Done. That did it. By the way, regarding animals, yesterday, the fellow presenting a case of a patient who got rash on her arms from hugging an alligator. So uh, just uh, said, how did she hug the alligator? And the fellow said, I don't know. I said, no, you have to take a good history. He did not take a good medical history. I'm going to take it myself and show you. So I entered and asked the woman, how did you hug the alligator? That's scientific curiosity. I just want to know science. Yeah. And I discovered that she just carried the alligator in her arms. So I was glad that oh, it was a small alligator, not one like that. hanging down. So this is the first alligator allergy reported in Louisiana, in the world, but comes, it has to come from Louisiana before Australia or New Zealand find it. Oh. oh, look at that. This is a real, I don't know real, real what people do that. But this is, this is, I call a, a crime, an abuse, what? Who authorized the parents to do that to a beautiful child? Anybody can give opinion? Can we say this is a child abuse? And the colors of the tattoos, there are a lot of allergenic things, dyes and metal. And the red mercury sulfide, the azote dyes, chromium, and the green chromium, blue cobalt, purple manganese, and the yellow cadmium sulfide. And this goes, cause contact dermatitis very well. Newspapers love these things. This is USA. And wrote about allergies to air fresheners and scented candles. And about alcohol beverages, beverages. And about pets. And this was in a national meeting that I organized, called it Allergies to Life's Pleasure. And each speaker spoke about something. And the papers loved it. Oh, look at this. This is amazing, amazing. Perfume allergy, which there is nothing called perfume allergy. So it brings 10 million judgment. A jury awarded a 10.6 million to a one-time radio host who was fired after complaining a co-worker's perfume made her sick. And uh, the manager told her, we cannot prevent people from putting perfumes or hair sprays. So she stayed home and said, I'm not coming to work unless you do that. She didn't come home, so they fired her. So she sued them. Sued as discriminated against her for a disability. Who said that allergy is disability? But our judges are wonderful. Although he, that judge is not from Louisiana. He did 10 million. Drinking. Non-alcoholic beverages have food protein in them, have dyes, flavors, and other additives to market it. Well, and the alcoholic beverages have also food proteins, depending on the origin of the wine, uh, the sulfites as a preservative. Most uh, alcoholic drinks have sulfites various degrees. Dyes and other additives. So the natural additives are the 
original substance that the wine or the alcoholic drink made of, barley, grapes, hops, and yeast, and the alcohol itself, ethanol, and they have, generating wine has vasoactive amines, histamine itself is there, tryptamine and tyramine. Extrinsic substance that is being added, egg white, anything that have bubbles in it, champagne, any alcoholic drink with bubbles, that's made of white of the egg, it's added. And sulfites and flavors, insect proteins, because when they crush these things in the factory, there are insects in them. And some occasionally react to the little insect that happened there. Well, some people claim that alcohol has a medicinal value. Well, I suppose we could call this socialized medicine. In Sweden, they found allergic rhinitis increased. The increase in rhinitis and among adults within eight years was correlated with pollen sensitization increased, particularly in Sweden, the birch tree is common, and the increase in the trees and the grass pollens. Contact with animals during childhood seems to reduce, and the word childhood means early childhood. That's the person who is not allergic yet. If there are animals in the house, be associated with reduced risk. So did I confuse you? I just said that dogs and pets are bad. And here say the presence of pets. The presence of hair and dander are allergens. The presence of animals causing dirt in the house causing bacteria and endotoxins. And the endotoxins are seen as, uh, as an inf sort of infection by the immune system. So the T cell will be fooled by the endotoxin <coughs> and go towards the T helper one as if it is fighting infection and produces interferon. So it will not go to the other side and fight normal allergens. So we have to differentiate if dogs and cats good or bad. I suggest and I want that maybe after I retire, I take some of my fellows who are not making enough money and we sell the urine and fecal matter of the animals in sprays to prevent the allergens. That will uh, make money, probably, in prevention. But not animal hair and dander. Okay. <clears throat> Come to the industrialization of countries. Of course, they are needed, and there are inhalant allergens of various kinds in the factory and contactant as well. Sport is a popular thing. Wonderful, good. But exercise can discover. Of course, it worsens asthma. But surveys in schools, all school children, will be surveyed by questionnaire and auscultation and spirometry and exercise. In fact, many normal kids never complained of wheezing when they were exercised. The respiratory function went down. So exercise ex exposed a subclinical asthma in them. Food-dependent exercise induced anaphylaxis, a very special entity that the person can exercise alone, no problem, and they can eat any food, no problem, but the combination will cause the trouble. And the combination can be to one food or multiple foods. Several years ago, one of my colleagues, the doctor, Ayafeira, in Monroe, had 
a teenager known to have this entity to wheat. And he knew he has to wait at least two hours, preferably four hours, in between eating and exercising. And he got the sandwich from outside the house and was by himself in the house and waited the two hours and started to eat. And he got anaphylaxis. The telephone was in another room who crawled to go to the other room and tell the telephone calling 911 and could not talk afterwards. The ambulance people came and broke the door and saved him. And we wrote that the interval should be more than four hours in some patients. It is a pity, as much as I love the specialty in allergy, and it is a popular group of diseases, that the person can die from anaphylaxis while in very healthy condition. And not debilitating disease, just a piece of shrimp or a piece of food, and just die within minutes. Contactants. Why the variety of articles is used in the sport business? Inhale, particularly if there's rubber. Inhalants will the field and the locker area of the humidity, there are mold and dust and even pollen and animal dander. Physical agents, people can have solar urticaria, heat induced urticaria, cholinergic urticaria from the exercise, or cold or friction that is. Uh, dermographism or from pressure. Insect is thing because it is in the open field, of course, there will be, and in our area, the fire and allergy, unless the field is inspected and treated periodically. And it is not just increased exposure to allergens. Even in areas where there was no increase in allergen, there was increase in allergies. And uh, this area in Sweden, during a five-year period, more than 2,000 sera were tested for peanut-specific IgE, found that the request for peanut-specific IgE jumped within four years to two and a half times. Frequency of positive peanut-specific IgE increased by 30% over five years. But there was no apparent concomitant increase in peanut consumption in the nation. So allergies are going to increase even if you don't increase the exposure. In the United Kingdom, in a relatively isolated area, an island called the Isle of Wight. It's a very stable, and they, they study it a lot because people don't know much. Compared to a study six years earlier, 981-year-old children in the same population area using similar methodology, the sensitization to peanut was tripled, and the actual allergy manifestations were tripled as well. That's a big difference. I will conclude with this slide. It's a wonderful world. French woman claimed extreme sensitivity to electromagnetic radiation found in most modern electronic devices. Her exposure to mobile phones, Wi-Fi routers, TVs, remote controls, and other gadgets caused heart palpitation, nausea, and headaches. Nothing objective here we see. She coped with the condition by living in a barn, good for you, in a remote mountain area with water from the well and no electricity. That's love, wonderful. Health authorities did not recognize her illness, so she went to court. And the wonderful court gave her a disability, monthly disability of almost a thousand US dollars. Wow, isn't it? 
So in conclusion for this part, allergens and the asthma are definitely increasing and are expected to continue. Our medical students get zero lectures of allergy. I volunteered for it when I came 16 years ago. And after some years, I found I'm not on the schedule. And when I volunteered, Charlotte just asked me that one speaker could not come can I just replace that substitute for one time? I said, although I'm very busy, yes, I will. And when I found the reaction on the faces of the students, I said, I will continue. And continue for several years and disappeared. When I asked Dr. Bocchini, why disappeared? I said, the students said they get too much didactic lectures and they want to reduce. I said, mine came out. The only lecture is. Who is teaching whom? Why don't they allow our children when they want to eat lollipop only or ice cream instead of me? Well, I don't do that. And a group of diseases that are treatable and controllable and they affect one third of the population. Our medical school students graduate without a single allergy section. Do you see I'm bleeding? I have pads on my heart here. Significant impact on quality of life of patient and family. Of course, the allergies are have. Cost. Increasing medical cost. People who have allergies, even simple allergies, we um, realize the asthmatic cannot go to the school and cannot go to work, so there is productivity, but the quality of life is miserable. Even allergic rhinitis, that people don't care about it and they think that's normal. I hear the mother say, he is a different kid. What do you mean a different kid? I mean, he's not having running nose anymore. Not just that, he is a nice kid. He became a better kid. It's not just a matter of opening the nose or letting the secretion dry. Next time, if I'll be given a chance, we'll complete the other half about the contributory factors and mechanisms. And since you are nice and uh, to entice you to come back, I will include the global warming is an intriguing area. So please come next time, bring your children and your family and your neighbors to that. Thank you very much. We have so questions. Not only education, but entertainment. Um, questions, comments. So, in, in the younger children, um, with the, are you supposing that the uh, the mixed combination of certainly they're not having a lot of additional foods and other things? The other than formula exposure and, and all, um, can you relate what, the, the kind, what other potential things? Is it just a combination of potential things that increase the likelihood for a trigger for like atopic dermatitis and yeah. other things? Thanks. Allergic diseases, including asthma, result from genetic and environmental factors. The stronger the genetic, both parents will be stronger than one. That's the basis. Then the environment will come in and make the allergy appear at any age. The balance come disturbed either in the first few months or at the age of 70. In early infancy, while the T cell is developing, 
to fight the infections. And we are delivering the babies in a clean area. And the house is clean and giving immunizations and antibiotics. And this will come in the second part of the talk. And the T cell feels, well, I don't have a job to do what. So I react to innocent things. So if we fool the T cell by dirt, dirty environment, that's not harmful, in the toxins of bacteria that, that can help. Regarding introduction of food, there has been the policy always, the first four to six months, one food is the right thing, preferably breastfeeding, or a single formula. Recent studies showed, and with the old, the old studies, we said that allergenic foods to be delayed, and the expert opinions of committees said, well, the gastrointestinal tract is not mature, and the baby is developing one in one formula. Don't introduce cow's milk until one year of age, and the egg two years of age, and peanuts three or four years of age, eight, and fish after four or five years. Just expert opinion. Until one study came out from one country that they are giving babies peanut product early and compared it with others, babies did not take that, but yes, the peanut is less, meaning build tolerance. And the newspapers and the dictionary say, hey, early introduction. Early when? They did not mention not before four months. So early, it's not earlier than before at all. Before we said not before, it's just don't delay it too much. Of course, this will not prevent, but will reduce, have reduced. The quantity, how much we, we give and how frequent, it just left to the natural way. Each family is different, but at least everything to be gradual so that the gastrointestinal tract receives that foreign substance easier and digest it uh, better in that way. So, did I answer your mm -hmm. question? All right. Well, there's more stuff about this issue in the next part. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much.